So welcome. Thank you guys for coming out, especially at the end of South By. I can only imagine the amount of stories we'll be hearing later. Um, hope you got your card. I got it. Good. All right, that's good. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, if you don't make your place, um, I understand there are a lot of bars still open for business, so you know we can all hang out there later. So um, I thank you guys for coming out. It's Acceler Reader Demo Day. We're very excited. I want to thank GAN um, for being a great co-sponsor as usual, and also the Capital Factory for letting us use their lovely space here in Austin. Uh, we are very excited. I'm with the SBA. My name is Pravina. I should probably started with that. Uh, and we're very excited to be here. Most of you are probably going, what is the SBA? Which is fine. I get that question all the time. Uh, it is not the Small Business Association. We are not the guys who are in common collectors. We're the Small Business Administration. We're a federal agency that does all sorts of programs to help small businesses. But we're in here in particular to not to talk about our traditional programs. If you want to find out more about them, we have a great website that really sucks. It's called SBA.gov. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say this is because uh, government agencies believe if we tell you everything possibly to know about us, you'll figure it out in 25 clicks that we don't know how to put up websites. But uh, SBA.gov has a lot about information about all our very uh, traditional programs. You've probably heard about the dry cleaner that got a loan, and um, that's one of our programs to do government contracting. And then we have an entire resource partner network that gives free advice on things like tax planning. So if you're a small business, I always tell people it's now's the time to go start taking those seminars because there are a lot of credits that you're probably not noticing. Um, but then there's this little division called innovation and investment. And we are small compared to our big brothers in the agency, but what we do is uh, we're fund to fund. So we help private equity funds actually focus on small businesses. We also do the SPIR XTTR program, which I encourage people to look if you're, I was just talking to someone else, yes, um, about it, it's we provide funding grants for research, and uh, one of the reasons I say I look at it is everybody knows about iRobot. It was an SBI or SDTR grant that became a huge company that we also did SBIC stuff. And my favorite is NSF um, actually started the 3D printing. That's what they did. It was a grant, $150,000 grant that started that entire in, in, in industry. So I encourage you to look at that program. And then we do what I like to call everything else to support high growth entrepreneurs. So today we have an exciting announcement. We got two and a half million dollars from our after our budget process, thanks for thanks to Congress. And we're actually gonna do a competition to support accelerators. So we're actually gonna do capital building, capacity building. We're gonna do a competition across the country to give out that two and a half million dollars. It's not a grant, so you don't have to write a 30 page proposal. It's not a loan, it's not all this other. It's actually truly a competition where we're gonna say, you're the best, you're the brightest. How do we support your ecosystems across the country? And if you're brand new and never done it before, but you've got a great ecosystem that you want to put some money in, we're also going to do for both established and non-established. So it's going to be launched out in the summer, and this is the precursor to it, to do these types of demo days so that we can find the accelerators and get you guys interested to apply. Because usually when you hear the government's giving free money, people run the other way. But this is a real competition. So um, it's like Shark Tank on um, Shark Tank nationally. So that's what I like to call it. So we're very excited about that. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it on to the great co-host team of Kim Kaiser and Pat. Um, they're gonna use you for the rest of the afternoon. I'm really looking forward to hearing all your presentations because we're hoping that some of you guys will apply and um, be part of the competition so that we can give you guys some free money. So here you go. <laughs> Thanks, Pravina. Uh, I'll just echo what Pravina said, thanking you for coming out. I know it's towards the end of a very long week for some of you, so glad you're here. Um, just quickly to talk about how the rest of the day will work. Um, we're going to kick off the presentations momentarily, and then we're just going to go straight through, so it'll be about an hour-ish um, to knock the presentations out. We'll take a little bit of a break while we reset this space. And then we're going to have an opportunity for accelerators and startups who are here to have a seat at the table, have people mill around and network and talk about what you're doing, um, just have kind of open space like that. Praveen and I will also be around um, to talk to you more about what the SBA is doing, what we might be able to provide for you as far as resources, um, and we can talk a little more about the competition as well. Um, so we'll probably be fully wrapped up around three. Um, but it'll be pretty open-ended the second part of the day. Anyway, thank you so much for coming, and Patrick's going to get us going. Woo! Woo! Right. Well, hi, everybody. So I'm Patrick Riley, the Executive Director of the Global Accelerator Network. It's good to see many of you in the room. So the purpose of this 
time together is to get all the accelerators um, that are at South by together, just to kind of share the model and to dig into what they're doing. Um, there's also a few founders in the room who want to get to know you. Um, so but really, we want you to have fun, relax. The way that's going to work is each accelerator is going to talk about their model for about five minutes. Um, super intense. And the other thing is I have a buzzer, so after five minutes, it buzzes. And at that point, we can pull them off stage. I mean, if you want to tackle them, you're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly's a very big man. Uh, I get intimidated by this man every time I see him, and he will tackle you. I think it's okay. Um, so uh, a couple ground rules for the day, um, and it's that number one, let's be supportive. Right after people are done, let's get really excited for them, clap for them. Um, the second thing is, is that we aren't going to have any Q and A at the end of it. So make sure to bring it up with people at the end. And the third ground rule is, please tell me how good looking I am throughout the day. Um, things like how good my jeans look, how good my beard looks, um, how good my biceps look. I mean, all those things are things that I really want to hear. So please make sure that you continue to tell me that all throughout the day. You look amazing. Um, I look amazing. Thank you, Jason. Very pretty. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> OK, so with that, um, oh, and, um, just quick background on the Global Accelerator Network. So we're a group of 55 accelerators that operate a short-term mentorship driven model around the world. Um, and they, uh, so they operate about three to four month long models, connect about 10 companies with something like 40 to 80 mentors. Um, and cool, uh, this cool press for us yesterday, uh, they announced accelerator rankings that was done by Yale Hotchberg out of MIT and she had the top 15 accelerators and 10 of those accelerators were game members. So we're pretty excited about that. So, yeah, that's great. Okay, so with that, uh, let's have our, the first accelerator get up and talk. This is Shellen and Seth from, uh, I always get your last name wrong. Shellen? Chef. 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 Um, from the Non-Reach Accelerator. And, and this accelerator is really cool in the sense of it's, it's a corporate-run accelerator that he's gonna describe, um, but it's run by the National Association of Realtors. Um, so, again, you might think your realtor is shady, but he's not. So he's a great guy, and he's going to go up and talk about what they're doing with, uh, with Nari. So with that, give him a hand. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. Great. So I'm Shalene Shah. I'm with the NAR Reach program. Uh, we're NAR's Strategic Technology Accelerator. We also run a venture capital arm called Second Century Ventures. Can I make it up there? Yep. No worries. Um, so what did you do last night? <laughs> Try to recover. Uh, no, we... Uh, this is a crazy conference. <laughs> this, it's my first time, so just navigating it was like half the battle this year. Um, cool. So I'll get started. So what is REACH? We call ourselves a strategic technology accelerator. We focus in on four major pillars. Uh, similar to other accelerators, we focus in around education and mentorship. The two other pillars we think are very, very different. But one is around product refinement. When we looked at companies that were targeting tools for small to medium businesses, we said they take two years to understand product market fit. That outlives most accelerators, and usually most people seek funding. Um, and we said that's too long. We need to find a way to bring that down. So what we did is we created a product insight panel. We went out and looked, found 600 industry professionals that were eager to test out new tools and technology and give feedback to startups with around their tools. This is how companies get from two years product market fit to six months. The next thing is marketing exposure. The hardest challenge in building a, a tool and technology for small to medium businesses is distribution. How do you get in front of your end customer? Because it's not a consumer app where you can go put out a bunch of Facebook ads and you can't build a large enterprise sales channel. So what we've done is we've actually created a small marketing component to our program. This is where we revolve the program around industry events. We do a bunch of co-branding, online online marketing campaigns with NAR to really help the companies build their brand very quickly. All right, so what else makes this unique? We're not a three-month model. We're an eight-month program. All, all of our companies are from around the country, and they come to meet in a, a location once a month for two to five days at a time. This is around industry events, and this is where a lot of the mentorship and all the face-to-face -face stuff actually happens. We also have a slightly different philosophy around funding. Um, we don't focus in on funding. We focus in on business development. We say, if you build a strong book of business, then funding will follow if you need it. And I'll get back to this when we come to the kind of results section of our last class. 
So, real estate. Everyone probably lives in a home. <laughs> Many of you own a home. How big is this industry really? It is the largest portion of the GDP. It's greater than education and healthcare. There's one million realtors in the marketplace. That is the largest trade association in the world. They spend $7 billion in marketing every year. So it's huge, even though most people don't realize how big it is. Uh, this just talks about our program and kind of the different locations we're in for 2014. So the biggest misnomer I hear is the type of companies we look for. Because as soon as I say from, from the National Association of Realtors, they'll say, well, did you guys invest in Zillow? <laughs> and uh, no, <laughs> uh, we typically look for technologies outside this space. We want to bring innovation into this vertical. So we're looking for tools and technologies where real estate is one vertical that they're going after, but not necessarily the only vertical. So one of our sample investments from our Second Century Ventures days is a company called DocuSign, which like almost everyone's heard of now. In 2009, when we invested in them, no one had. Um, and so we really like those type of models. Um, so we look for business productivity among, SM among SMBs. We look at consumer services. Turns out within the first year of a home purchase, consumers spend $40 billion in furnishings and remodel. That's one third of the entire furnishings and remodel market. So all these retailers, all these guys are trying to target the consumer when they're making that transaction. What better way to connect them through your realtor? Oh, and we do look at deal, real estate only companies. So not to say we don't look at those, but we do look at a lot of other things. Um, I'll give you a couple examples from our last class just to give you an idea of the, how diverse the companies are. I saw about a company called BombBomb. Bomb. They do video email marketing. Any sales professional, if they're good, will develop a list of clients that they want to get in front of more often. And they can't because they're limited in time. So video is a great avenue for that. <clears throat> However, there's no great way to deliver video, especially over email because you don't know what device they're on, you don't know what bandwidth it is, so on and so forth. These guys have nailed that. What they've realized is if you can send a video through their platform, they will automatically detect the device as well as the bandwidth of the user at the other end and deliver one of 11 optimized streams. Planwise, they're a personal financial planning tool. What they do is they're basically your mint.com, but people don't think about their budget, their, their finances in terms of budgets like mint really makes you out, makes you think of them. People think about it in terms of plans. I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car, I want to go on vacation. So what these guys do is very quickly you can import it in your budget, but then you can add plans and see how it affects your cash flow. Well, it turns out one of the biggest decisions anyone ever makes when it comes to their finances is buying a home. So let's talk about the successes from 2013. Um, we're really focused on our business development. So we had seven companies in the program. Five out of the seven companies signed deals with major brands while they were in the program. Four out of the seven companies iterated on their product or introduced a new product while they were in the program. We estimate that the marketing aspect of what we do landed 30 million impressions for the company. Uh, uh, revenues, this is where the rubber hits the road. So we had companies that come in that were previously, almost all of our companies have raised a little bit of seed capital. So some were pre-revenue and some were close to a million dollars in revenue. Every company that came in pre-revenue has revenue today. If they had a little bit of revenue, they grew 10, 20X. But more importantly, if they had a million dollars in revenue, they also grew 2X. So ultimately, if, if our, our theory is right, that if you build your business, funding will follow, uh, that's where the funding part comes in. Um, every company that looked to raise capital is, has either raised capital, and we have a couple companies in the process of raising capital, and it, look like, it looks like they're gonna succeed very quickly. One company is cash flow positive. It doesn't need capital. That's entrepreneurial friendly. Um, and of the companies that raise capital, they raise from a half a million to five million with an average of about two. So how can you help me? We're looking for companies for our 2014 class. Our application deadline is March 21st. So if there's companies in your region, in your programs, that you think would be a good fit, People call us the Graduate Program for Accelerators. Awesome, thanks for it. That's the first time in the history of these that someone hasn't been allowed to go over a minute. So, that might be, Kelly was getting anxious over there, I was watching him. Um, no, but great job. Uh, I love that stat of uh, how five, what was it, out of five out of the seven recessions, uh, the real estate industry got people out of it, right? The other thing is, how many times did it help people go into recession? But we'll let we'll, we'll we'll people talk about that later. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so with that, um, 
You know, it, I, I will most likely make them available. What I'll do is I'll ask everybody if they're fine with sharing their decks uh, with everybody, and then we'll share with people that are here, um, as long as they're fine with sharing it. Um, okay, so the next presenter is Katiri from Springboard. Um, I really like uh, their mission and what they're doing to support uh, women focused entrepreneurs. So with that, we'll have Springboard come up. Give her a hand. <laughs> First time at South by Southwest, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. This doesn't count towards your time, by the way. Kateri Zulawaka, Community Manager for Springboard Enterprises. So what is Springboard? Springboard is a venture catalyst that exists to support women-led entrepreneurs in the tech and life science startup space. Uh, so what does women-led mean? That means traditionally founder, co-founder, C-suite level, or someone with significant equity. We're looking for high growth, high potential entrepreneurs who have the, the ability to build big businesses starting small. We believe in the power of human capital and work hard to make sure that we make valuable connections for you. So we're a nonprofit based in Washington, D.C., and we've been around for 14 years. So we're all about women, capital, and connections. So what have we done in the past 14 years? We have had 545 companies come through our accelerator programs, and they've gone on to raise over $6.2 billion now. Uh, so 83% of the companies we work with raise capital post springboard and we've had 10 IPOs and one more in the pipeline. So when we say building big businesses starting small, we really mean it. And one of the things that I find amazing is that 80% of the companies we've worked with are still in business today, having either been merged, acquired, or operating as a solo enterprise. So some of our success stories, we get to share iRobot. Um, and Helen Greiner actually spoke at our dinner the other night, um, but also Zipcar, Constant Contact, Minute Clinic, a lot of large pharma companies, household names, and this is just a small snapshot. So Springboard is a non-residential accelerator program. We accept companies from all over the country and all over the world. We've also run programs in Israel, and we just got back from Australia running our second Australian program. So how does our accelerator work? Uh, we have an aggressive recruitment process in which we identify high potential female entrepreneurs. We put them through a rigorous screening process, giving them constructive feedback throughout the entire process. And then once we decide on our cohort, we bring them all physically together for a boot camp, wherein we tear apart their businesses, find their weaknesses, uh, find potential issues down the pipeline, and then we curate a coaching team from our network in order to address all those areas of concern. So we're a community-driven accelerator, meaning that everyone who's involved with us is a volunteer. So we have thousands of members in our network, some of the top investors, top corporate strategists, um, industry experts. Our chairman is Kay Koplovitz, who founded USA Networks and Sci-Fi Network, which ended up being a $5 billion business. So we're talking high caliber people who you have access to, because we believe that you need a network of introducers. Investors don't want to meet you, they want to be introduced by, to you. So we give you that network. Um, from there, we finish up the coaching process and then have a um, either a venture forum in which we have high profile speakers come, high profile investors come and hear you pitch, or we set up a series of uh, strategic meetings with corporate partners and key investors for you. But at the end of our program, you enter into our lifelong network. So all of the alums of our program are still in contact with us today. We're still supporting them, making connections for them. Um, we joke that it's like Hotel California, you check out but you can never leave, and we really don't let you leave. Um, so we still track all our entrepreneurs, they still um, come and ask us for connections and assistance, and oftentimes entrepreneurs will come back through the program sometimes with their companies at a, later, at a later stage, like Communispace did, or sometimes with a new venture entirely. Uh, so 
What I am asking for today, uh, since we are a nonprofit, we're always looking for sponsorship to help us support our mission. Um, the way that our business model works, you know, we just try to cover our costs because we so strongly believe in supporting female entrepreneurs. Um, additionally, we have our life sciences applications currently open. So if you know any women in startups doing um, biotech, health IT, or med devices, um, we would love to be introduced to them. And we will also be announcing a fashion tech program soon with a partnership fund for New York City. So we're really excited about that and looking for great companies. So thank you very much. I think I did five minutes. That was perfect. <laughs> One day I'm hoping to get into their accelerator. Um, <laughs> get some more but I keep getting turned down for whatever reason. No, I think one of the cool things about this accelerator, and uh, many of them are seeing this, is that network of hosts going through the accelerator seems to be really strong. Um, so it's cool that that's a huge part of what they're doing. I mean, a whole. I mean, I, I know there's one slide solely devoted to it, but I think that also means that they really care about that network post accelerator. And I think a lot of people just think that accelerator program just lasts those three to six months, but really, it's a network post accelerator that seems to be helping a lot of people out. So it's really cool to see that. Uh, by the way, James Belfer just joined us from the Dogfish Accelerator. He he's always late, um, so we're so glad that you're here and joining us. Um, hey, uh, and you're going to be up right after this next one, uh, just so you know. Um, so with that, um, we now have the Vindy Accelerator coming up. So I'll let you come up and, uh, and take it away. So in keeping with the women-led theme, we will continue. Our partners at Springboard Enterprises, we're so happy they were able to make it. Um, our founder, Terry Chase Hazel, is on the board of Springboard Enterprises, so we have a, a long connection with them. Um, my name is Rebecca Gonzalez. I'm the very new assistant executive director of um, Avindi, and this is Laura Bosworth, one of the founders. And I'm going to let her start the presentation, and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, Laura Bosworth, I am a co-founder of this program. Uh, I'm also CEO of a biotech that uh, life sciences, so I, I've got to fill out my application. We talked about that on Saturday night, so well, on my list of to-dos. Good thing the South by Southwest is over now. So I was going to start with um, just a little bit of our history because our co-founder, Terry Chase Hazel, is a successful entrepreneur. She was in Maryland and she was part of a program that was launched up there that was a woman's accelerator funded by the National Science Foundation, of whom I'm a big fan because I have an SBIR NSF grant too, so um, a fabulous federal agency. And uh, she was very excited about it. It's a very different program. It runs for a year. She was instrumental in implementing that, but then she wanted to move to Texas. So she brought the program with her to Texas in 2009 uh, and became affiliated with one of the local universities who was willing to sponsor it so that we could kind of try it out. Uh, I got involved in 2011. We've run several programs. We've run some programs out in El Paso. The university out there sponsored us while we were there. And um, just this last year, we went ahead and launched, we spun out on our own. So a similar program. One of the things we keep doing is trying to shorten it. So all of you, we hear the ones like, we have longer ones, we have shorter ones. It's such a dilemma back and forth on which, which way to go because you kind of need both. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our program. Uh, our model is unique. We are focused on women. However, we tend to work with very, very early phase women. In fact, many of our women who come to our program, sometimes they have an idea and they've done a little bit of work out on it. Sometimes they've even formed a company and tried to do some things. It's probably a third of them who've been working on it for a little while, a third who have an idea, and a third who don't even have an idea. And much of the research, I think everyone here knows that women don't participate in uh, thinking big kind of companies. Uh, only 3% of venture funded companies are women led or founded. And what the research shows is that women don't think big. They don't look at business models in the same way. And so we spend a lot of time kind of training on that. They don't have the same networks. So like what Springboard does around the network is amazing and fabulous. Um, but there are other things women do that are somewhat self-destructive in our own ability to raise capital and to have credibility. 
And, and so we really help women with that. And, and providing a community of other women where they can safely talk about the worries that they have in their programs, practice how they would discuss it with uh, investors, really seems to make a big difference. Now I'm gonna tell you something, and when I got involved with Terry and she told me that, I was like, because I came out of high tech, I was like, well that sounds like a load of crap to me, you know? <laughs> but I work with men all the time, and they're all right. <laughs> um, but I'm a total convert on this, because I have now gone through six or seven programs, and I have seen what a huge difference it makes to these women. So, <clears throat> yeah, are there women out there who don't need that kind of community? Probably. But it is phenomenal, the difference, just in their confidence and their ability to present themselves and talk about themselves in a meaningful, fact-based way instead of like, I hope to one day maybe share my passion with the world and have a big company. You know, it's, it's just, it's a different kind of business style. And so that's, that's really sort of what we focus on. So if I could talk about a little bit, we have, we do think of ourselves as really the uh, the seed seed stage, the pre-seed, because a lot of our women are just getting started. We've had some success with uh, some of our women. I think we have a recent one that just came to the Capital Factory. We've had them go to the Austin Technology Incubator. One of our women went uh, to Microsoft's Techstars up in, in uh, Seattle. And so, it, Rebecca and I were saying we don't like to use the word the farm team, you know, because we're like, that's such a male term. But so if anybody could give us a better way to come up with, we, we'd like to use it. Uh, but Jeanette has a medical device company. We're also across all kinds of technologies. She has over a million dollars in funding from the federal government. Mary has, they're bootstrapping it themselves, but she's done, gone up to tech stars. We have a consumer product with a stroller for twins. And uh, the, Leslie has raised venture capital. In fact, she raised more than she was asking for when she went out. And so she's in the middle of her product development right now. Um, Kim just recently, I think, joined the Capital Factory. Oh, I'm gonna keep going. And, um, and anyway, so we, we've got a lot of, a lot of success. Give it to Rebecca. I wanted to quickly let you know, we are a nonprofit. We are looking for support always. Um, we put some numbers together around capacity building, curriculum packaging, because we're putting distance learning together. We're also working with the cities of Houston and San Antonio in Texas, and we're also uh, have some interest from Las Vegas in launching women programs there. So we'd like to package everything up, expand it, and then of course, scholarships and awards for our women would be great. And then of course, what you can all do for us, promotion and networking, that's free, we'll take it. So we're looking for a class to start in the next two to three weeks here in Austin for women interested in scalable businesses. So thank you all. No, great job. Um, I get another accelerator that I have. I will never be able to be in, but that's okay. Um, no, but the, the, uh, the cool thing here that I, I like is so many of your <coughs> companies are then going into other accelerators. Yeah. And it's interesting that how that's, I'm seeing that take place a lot more around the country. So very cool to see that. Um, so James, do you have a presentation as well? I do. Okay, come on up. Not only was James late, but he didn't see me his presentation. <laughs> so yeah, this is the public shaming that I absolutely love. We, we did send it last night at like 11. Um, but yeah, short short story, my entire family actually has been given the middle name Slomo. Um, we are late to everything, so my apologies for, for being late, and I accept my public shaming. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. Slomo, but Yiddish? Is it Yiddish? Yeah. Oh, could be. <laughs> We have three minutes here, so we can talk about everyone. What's the world? How's everyone enjoying South by? <laughs> yeah. This is my. This I've heard some of you say it's your first time here and you're overwhelmed. This is my second time here and I'm still overwhelmed. <laughs> and I want to go home and cry tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Um, it's fun. Oh, why is it taking so long? I know it's. You can go ahead and start up if you want. Should we? Yeah. Um, Sorry, James. Sorry. Right. Forget it. Um, so, uh, oh, there it goes. Perfect. That's fine. Oh, that's the end. That's <laughs> better. Oh. See, this is, I'm, I'm from the, so you know a little bit about dogfish. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, quick, quickest one yet. Didn't need a minute over. Needed 30 seconds of your time. Um, no, we're, 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 we're a, a film accelerator, so tech issues. Go okay. figure. Uh, so, hi. <laughs> I'm James Belfer. I'm the CEO and managing director of Dogfish Accelerator. And we are the first accelerator program for independent film and content industry. Just move forward. There we go. Content industry. Um, so, uh, Dogfish Accelerator it comes from my firsthand experience as an investor and is our solution to taking the chaos from the filmmaking industry and turning it into an opportunity. It all started in 2009 when I founded Dogfish Pictures as an angel fund for investing into independent film. The six films that I've worked on had varying degrees of success from uh, festival premieres to major acquisitions by, by uh, major distributors to critical acclaim and, and awards and even some financial awards. However, all of these successes felt short-term and front-loaded to me and I would yearn for another way to ultimately navigate the business. As a result, I decided to do two things. One was to, was to learn uh, outsider uh, best practices from entrepreneurs and investors by talking to the startup community and by going to NYU Business School. And the second was to find out what the hell this thing Techstars was and what happens inside of it. I was able to do that in 2012. Uh, I was hired as an associate uh, to work for the Summer Boulder Program. Uh, and uh, was so enlightened by the experience that by January of 2013, we had taken the accelerator model and applied it to independent film. Um, sorry, what's next? Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, however, the inaugural 440 applications that we got showed us that, that uh, a content accelerator was something that far surpassed independent film. As a result, we ended up accepting companies who were in the business of content disruption. These are companies that wanted to develop new business models for content creation, monetization, marketing, distribution, and are capable of leveraging the new technologies that are entering our industry on a day-to-day -day basis. But mo most importantly, we accepted companies with impassioned creative entrepreneurs that were making content in what we call the four C's. Controversy, uh, we like playing devil's advocate to spark conversation. Cause. We love fostering social movements. Creation, uh, we like working with artists, new and experienced with very strong visions. And lastly, crap. <laughs> Sometimes people want to make a cult film like Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, and we're kind of into that. <laughs> but what we, found by, what we found by working with these passion projects of these creative entrepreneurs is that there was a high level of, of uh, blood, sweat, and tears. The emotional support, the willing to be nimble, and to be lean in order to not take anything for granted and to see their visions come true. So let's take a quick look at some of our companies. First, we have Floral Knox. Uh, they're an internet comedy brand uh, with a YouTube channel that has generated over 11 million views. Uh, they're most known for the Bane Raps video and the definitive Arnold Schwarzenegger kill count. Uh, they, they are a combination of comedy, original music, and interactive elements whenever and wherever they can be incorporated uh, and are doing everything in their power to break the internet and to entice and excite cult audiences. Next we have Exit Strategy. Uh, they, are, they are creating captivating stories built on cross-platform user experiences and 360 degree entertainment properties. Founded by Emmy Award and Webby Award winning Viacom and Sony producers, uh, they have created what they call an indie tentpole model that, that takes uh, IP and turns it into graphic novels, feature films, video games, television series, and so much more, all on the independent level. Uh, behind me, you can see a demo of an interactive platform that they actually built in order to gamify video content. And, that, and last, uh, Guagua Productions. Uh, they're creating subversive media focused on digital and direct-to-fan distribution strategies. Um, rather than focusing on the big boomer bust major festival acquisition strategy, sorry South by, uh, Guagua is focusing on, on using B2C practices from the startup community in order to keep more of their upside, control their distribution process, um, and just go direct-to-fan. So where do we need support? 
from accelerators. Uh, we are, this is our first year as an accelerator program, so we are constantly seeking mentorship around operations and programming. Um, we have over a year's worth of data now based on our applications and our process of going through the program, and, and we, we are, are currently figuring out the, the best way to, for the next iteration of Dogfish 2. And from the tech and content community, there is a whole new world of investors that is, that is starting to grow as a combination of content and technology. Um, what we're looking for are people who are, are truly excited about entering the world of content and helping us dis disrupt it in a way that is more tech and forward thinking. And Forbes recently had an article titled, Los Angeles Driven by Content is the Next Big Startup Market. So come and help us create this next generation of content creators that are looking to really disrupt the industry, that are looking to create sustainable companies, and more importantly, are not trying to make the big Hollywood films that are, that are usually too big for their own good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm really glad you're not doing porn. Yeah. I'm, uh, now, you know, when, when he first came to me and said he's doing an independent movie film, I said, are you, sh this, is, this is PG, right? He said, yes. <laughs> Great. Um, so um, the, 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 uh, the next group uh, is Lee from BizDub. And th this group I really like because um, there's a lot of groups out there who are saying they're doing social impact accelerators. But the cool thing about this is I think that they're in, play they're in two cities, both of which are cities that have had their, their highs and their lows, and he's going to tell you a little more about sort of what they're doing to be a force in the city where they operate in. So with that, Lee, come up and uh, take it away. Give him a hand. Thanks. I'm going to go right into it while he sets me up. First thing I learned was when you're married with two kids at home, you go to bed at 10 o'clock when you're in Austin, just do it. I didn't go bar to bar last night, I went to bed, and I got the best night's sleep I had in four and a half years. So that's how I got through uh, Stop by So Far. Do I need this? I, I love you. I hate mics. Mm -hmm. Do you care about using the mic, everyone? You're cool. Awesome, thank you. I hate the way I sound in mics. Okay, let's put it on brief. So while he's pulling this up, let me talk about Detroit and Cleveland. When you hear Detroit, what's the first thing someone thinks? Cars. Cars? Cars. 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 What? Poverty, bankruptcy, bankruptcy. Yeah. There you go, Lafayette, Coney Island. Our ex-mayor who lives somewhere in Texas until he went to jail. Um, so Detroit's had a lot of bad times. Cleveland, the same way. Now who knows who Dan Gilbert is, anyone? Dan Gilbert, what? He is known of the Cavs. He's actually a serial entrepreneur who, um, let's go to him first who has founded Bizdom, and he's actually the chairman of Quicken Loans, who is the largest online mortgage company in the country, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, the majority owner of the Cavs, and a partner, Detroit Venture Partners, as well as involved in 114 other companies in Detroit, Cleveland, and several other cities. So what Bizdom is, is a startup accelerator that helps launch, fund, and grow uh, innovative web and tech-based startups in Detroit and Cleveland, and that's one of the keys. We're not, we are a in-city program. Matter of fact, if you come to BizDev, you get our money, you get our mentoring, you have to actually headquarter your business in Detroit or Cleveland. So you don't need to come, get some money, talk to the people at the cab, and then go back to Arkansas. You're staying in Detroit. We're building an ecosystem of entrepreneurs in Detroit. And we're getting a ton of help from the city, the state, uh, venture capital firms like Detroit Venture Partners and others. So how do we work? We're a three to six month accelerator two times per year in each city, with about 20 startups a year. We give $25,000 in seed funding, we take 8%. Uh, we have a convertible note for up to $100,000 that any of these startups can pitch for at any time. Uh, we have intense mentoring and training, and then we have a network of experts in our following funding. And this is where we start to get a little different. Um, we take companies that are obviously can leverage technology, they can scale and grow rapidly, uh, they're disruptive, and here's something new. Of the 117 companies that we call it the family of companies uh, are involved in real estate, finance, sports, casino gaming, gaming, and business and consumer resources are where we can help. I can't take a company and make a call to the third developer and the fourth designer from Yahoo, Twitter, and Google, right? But I can call the CEO of the Cleveland Cavaliers. I can talk to Dan Gilbert, who owns a huge mortgage company, Fathead, in-house realty. We have 20-some thousand realtors involved. 
So this is where we really can help. And we've helped companies from Chalkfly, who's redoing how office supplies are sold, to Mascot Secret, who lets you upgrade your seats at a sporting event. They moved from San Francisco to Cleveland so they can work with the cabs. Um, Backstitch, in-store finance. I mean, this is just a handful of our 52 companies we've invested in in two and a half years uh, at different levels of success. And as we talk about our family, Quicken Loans, Bedrock, we own 44 buildings in Detroit, a few more in Cleveland and a couple in Arizona. Um, Fathead, you've probably seen their big, largely white wall decals. I would love for capital factories to have the Fathead. You could move anywhere. And then who else do we have? NCU is a online uh, school, the Cavs, the Stadium, Veritex, Horseshoe Casinos, um, Greek Town Casino in Detroit. So we're in a lot of different things all around the country. 15 states, 112 plus companies. This, the business, I don't even know who they are because it was 111 yesterday until I got my deck. So we're adding constantly to the network. Um, and so while well, we can go to how you guys can help us. First off, we're excited to be part of the network. You know, as we talk to our entrepreneurs about the things you need, capital, connections, mentorships, and then the alumni network that we have, this is, a, this is an alumni network or a network for accelerators. I mean, the more we can work together from deal flow to best practices is why we're doing this. So if you have people coming through your program and you're like, look, you need to be with a sports team or man, this is awesome for a casino, send them over to us. We can help them. We really, really can. I mean, we've had people from Chicago, other parts of Ohio, New Jersey, San Francisco, Florida, come to a bankrupt, desolate city that has good Coney Island hot dogs. If you don't know what Coney Island is, come to Detroit, I'll take you. Um, <laughs> seriously, if you don't, they're the best. Well, not bad. Um, but we are doing something, and like Patrick said, you know, we're doing Detroit and we're doing Cleveland. You know, those are places that in 10 years from now are gonna be different. Um, we have an ecosystem that's building. I mean, we have a venture capital world that's coming. Last year we had seven VCs, now we have 32. Um, I think the last count between us, Detroit Venture Partners, and some of the other uh, startups based in Detroit, we have about 140 startups, all under two years old, all having you know, five, 600 employees between everybody. We have office spaces that are almost as cool as this for you know desk rentals and meeting rooms, and we're getting there. We're not Austin, we're not Boulder, we're not San Fran, but we're getting there, and everyone here can help us get there. And in 10 years, you guys will be a part of the story like we will. Thanks. Time. You did great. <laughs> yeah, great job. Um, by the way, earlier before we started, Lee pulled me aside and he said, "Kind of anybody here wants a fat head of you, meaning anybody here can get a fat head of me if they like." So wait, just talk to Lee, and Lee has pictures of me. You can put it in your office, in your house, whatever you like. Just this beautiful face staring at you all day long. So, we have Lee, Lee has that. head, so yeah, I mean, we could probably get one done for you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. He can do it. <laughs> um, so, we now have Eric Matthews coming up. Um, Eric uh, has a cool model in the sense that um, he they have three accelerators that are under their umbrella, which he's going to talk about. The other thing is, is this guy can sell anything to anybody, so believe about 50% of what he says. Um, <laughs> great guy. But he can sell you anything. So that will let Eric take it away. This builds up too much. I'll also take compliments on how I look as well today. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Also, apologies to the women led uh, programs. We have not done a very good amount of research. We thought we were one of the first, but you guys are way ahead of us. <laughs> You'll see a whole point where I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> um, good afternoon. My name is Eric Matthews, and I'm the founder of Starco. We're a venture development organization in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, when I first started out, we had our incubators un, uh, unfilled, and we had venture capital firms not investing in the local deal flow, and that's the if you build it, they will come model. And uh, it was our belief system that we needed to flip it around. Let's find those that were unsure if they should be entrepreneurs, unsure if they have good ideas, and move them through the startup valley of death to get to the other side. And in Memphis, much like Detroit and Cleveland, it's critically important that we do this. Memphis is the poorest uh, city in the country. Um, we have higher rates of unemployment, lower rates of tech sector job growth. 
um, and we're a majority minority city. And we know that we can't really advance our community uh, without uh, advancing the 70% of our population that is women and minorities uh, through entrepreneurship. Uh, so we believe that entrepreneurship is our critical solution. Um, based on data actually from Jumpstart out of Cleveland, we know that to take 1,000 raw ideas uh, through to 20 funded uh, businesses on the back end takes 16,000 hours of technical assistance invested. 12,000 of those hours are going to failed startups. That's a direct uh, talent investment into our community that actually resonates with our foundations. So for, for nonprofit guys that are out there, that's resonating with the foundations. Uh, we are vertically integrated uh, in nature. Uh, we you know, move to that startup valley desk, so we do operate the co-working space and you know, the startup weekends, things along those lines, but we also do the accelerator programs uh, as well as made our own angel network, angel fund, et cetera. There was basically nothing in Memphis and we, we built it all. We have a hybrid model, both 501c3 as well as for-profit funds in nature to support our work. Uh, the accelerators are over here. We operate three, as, uh, as uh, Pat said. Uh, Seed Hatcheries for Information Technology, uh, Upstart is for our women-led uh, tech focus, Spark Gap is for logistics technology, that's an industry strength for uh, Memphis, and we also have a uh, social entrepreneurship program that we are starting this year uh, as well. They operate just like Techstars, Money Mentors, Marine Style Boot Camp, uh, we get $15,000 and move them ahead. What is unique about our program is we do get a lot of first-time founders, like probably some of you uh, in, this, in this room. So we have a huge, huge focus on personal and professional development. We believe that if you build great founders, build build great companies, and even in the event of failure, that's a direct you know, injection of talent uh, into your community for entrepreneurship. Uh, so there is a lot of you know, personality testing. We set them up to fail at times. We even do things such as kind of CIA-like training to help build their confidence uh, as founders, et cetera. So kind of some unique kind of cool things with our partners. <laughs> And we do have a lot of amazing partners that are on board with us, not to mention uh, the least of which is uh, GAN. And that's been a fantastic thing. And actually, as a result of our membership, his partnerships have probably doubled in the past 12 months, so it's been amazing. Uh, our results, uh, we are transforming our ecosystem. We have 30% uh, or greater now women and minority participation in our program. Uh, we are raising money. 20% uh, of the teams are with, uh, that are raising money are women-led. Uh, teams are moving to Memphis to start up, which is also great. They love our uh, authenticity, our humble nature, but also the access that we can provide, and of course, Southern hospitality and barbecue also help. Um, we are gonna continue to grow uh, all on these numbers. These are kind of our projections for this year. So there's always four things that we ask for uh, when we're out uh, uh, in the community and out in the country. Uh, we are under resource by comparison to our peer organizations. Uh, so we're especially looking for partners and sponsors that want to, you know, brand associate, have their brand equity associated with building women and minorities. Uh, we are also undercapitalized. I know that's a common complaint, but it's particularly uh, problematic in, in Memphis. Um, we do need mentors. We actually have a lack of successful entrepreneurs as role models in our community. And we do need uh, examples, people that are willing to come in. We're gonna work with Pat on this uh, to kind of create peak experiences in our community and provide office hours and things along those lines. Finally, we don't actually have a very large megaphone in Memphis. And so we enlist people to help storytell and talk about what's going on in Memphis, whether it be from the women led tech perspective, logistics technology, but also as we're traveling the country uh, and talking to other you know, peers, we're finding that some of the uh, methodologies that we're using are interesting and applicable to other you know, portions of, 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 of the world, especially as it relates to women and minorities. <laughs> Um, so, as it says here, most of the Memphis, look, I mean, most of the world looks like Memphis and uh, not Silicon Valley, and so we're finding that's good interest to folks. So, um, I know I was talking fast, I practiced to be this fast, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Woo! Well, right. yeah. so, that's a wrap up. Join us in Memphis. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, that's great. I'm glad I set you up well by saying you can only believe 50% of what you say. You know, that the first woman accelerator was up there, so I set you up well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, no, and also, uh, it, it, Eric is one of my favorite people that I get to work with. Um, you go to Memphis and hang out with these guys, and the Memphis community is getting behind what they're doing, and it's really cool to see all these people get excited about these various accelerators, and it's cool that their mission is focused on minorities and women-led enterprises, so very, very cool on that front. Um, okay, so with that, we have Melanie up next from the Surge Accelerator. Um, these idea of niche-focused accelerators or vertical-focused accelerators are, it's getting bigger and bigger every month. Are right? you seeing another one of these vertical-focused accelerators happening? Um, so the cool thing about Melanie, this is one of the first vertical-focused accelerators that ever came to be. Um, so with that, Serge, take it away. Give her a hand. 
So our managing director, when I told him I was presenting today, he was like, make sure to tell them we're really badass. I was like, no, I'm telling you. We're really badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so without that, I really got to fix the format on that slide. I apologize. So uh, we are a vertically focused accelerator. We focus on the energy industry, which sounds really specific when com comparing other accelerators more of a broad focus, but if you know anything about energy, that's still a massive, massive space. So we cover everything from upstream oil and gas to power utilities, energy efficiency, clean web and water. Um, so there's a lot there. And um, just a background on how we got started. Uh, so Houston, big city, we have a lot of talent. Um, like other cities, are, I don't know who does Houston PR, but they're horrible at their job. Um, we have a lot of good stuff going for us that just nobody knows about. Um, so there's a lot of money in Houston, obviously, because of like a lot of oil and gas money. Um, we have an insane amount of talent, especially IT talent, and um, and all of like power and utilities and oil and gas are extremely ripe for disruption. Um, people don't really have any haven't had experience with mobile technologies and digitizing things that we do things that in the same way now that they did in 1920, which makes no sense. Um, and there's a lot of money, people are really actively seeking solutions, and so it's a big opportunity for entrepreneurs. Um, we've been around for three years, so we started in the spring of 2012, and at the beginning we said, okay, we're gonna focus on energy and IT, and we've now changed that to energy tech, and that's been driven a lot by our industry partners. Um, so like this year, we have uh, a solar-powered catamaran that self-writes in the ocean, and you can create a mesh communication network with underwater assets. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have a, being part of the GAN network, sorry, no, I'm clicking this right or wrong. Sorry. No, it's cool. I, it's, not, um, it's not you, it is the computer, which is frozen. Oh, okay. So we do a, a three-month program. We give $30,000 in capital for 6% equity and um, three month program. So we're, our class is in session right now. I apologize, I'm like getting south by exhaustion right now. <laughs> um, so the companies that we work with, we are vertically focused. Like I said, those are the, the categories. Um, and one thing I think this makes us a little bit different is if you're gonna do business in energy, it's naturally at a little bit of a later stage than what you would see. So we've only ever accepted two idea stage companies and we've, only done it when the people are world experts in that specific field. So most of the companies that are working with us are coming with some revenue um, and some customers and um, just need to be taken to the next step because in energy, if something goes wrong, it's not like you lose what's in your shopping cart, you, people die. <laughs> so we take it very seriously and just the complexity, we need later stage companies. So um, in the last three years, like I said, we're in our third class, so 21 out of 23 companies, that doesn't include our companies this year, um, are still around. Our funding has been really, really good, actually. So yesterday, we were in one of the top 10 accelerators that got ranked, which is what we were super excited about. Um, and we ranked even higher in some of the subcategories. So the follow-on funding by our alums is like, we're currently third in the country. And um, we also, some of our companies haven't raised money and they've landed like multi-million dollar contracts over four years. So that's exciting because we don't get diluted. Um, we have about 150 jobs. This is more a mentor-driven accelerator following the GAN model. Um, so we've connected a lot of our entrepreneurs with industry executives, corporates, serial entrepreneurs, typical thing. And um, so that's, um, that's us. And really, the other thing that's been really exciting for us is um, we've really become this hub of energy technology. And so people come to us from around the world and we work with, like, we invested in a Norwegian company that was selling to our Norwegian company to deploy technology in Norway, decision made in Houston. Um, and so we're kind of becoming that, that funnel and we get a lot of visibility into it. So that's it. I'm going to be really fast. <laughs> Thank you. So, first of all, give her a hand for being one of the top 10 accelerators in the world. That's awesome. yeah. So cool. All right, um, so, oh my gosh, uh, let me see who my next, the next uh, group to talk is. Um, so it is Kevin from Tech Ranch, which I think is one of the coolest names for an accelerator <laughs> of all time. So that Kevin come up and uh, give Kevin a hand. Yeah, I'm not responsible for a name, it's one of my 
co-founders that actually did that. Which button do I push? I'm just going to go right. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so I am one of the guys that has a little bit of a hangover right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I might be a little slow. And I'm actually, based on the conversation that we're having, I'm actually going to change a little bit about what I actually say. Uh, so I'll skip over a couple of slides. So I am a chemical, I'm founder of Tech Branch. I'm a long-term uh, technology entrepreneur. I've been building companies since over the last 20 years. I think we have a common enemy. This is the common enemy, right? The venture value of death. Um, the, the thing that I learned in the six ventures that I got from zero to half a million dollars in revenue, when two of them I got to a million dollars in revenue, most of my experience is actually bootstrapping. And the thing that I learned in, in bootstrapping those ventures across that is I was also trying to disrupt industries. Built the first internet banking application, built one of the first high scale e commerce engines, uh, Fidel.com, built other stuff like that as a, as a founder. But my, my concern is how can we reach even farther out into the disruptive technology and bring it in? And then, you know, a lot of times, healthy entrepreneur, before they're even ready for it, the, is one of the seed accelerators. Um, it's really to fight against that. The, uh, the idea that I came up with is building what I call an entrepreneur development organization. Uh, we, this is a different kind of incubator. I did site visits on in North and South America, looked at 36 different models of entrepreneur support, and decided that the thing that I wanted to do is the kind of guy who likes to go way out there and, and look for the disruptive idea before it's, you know, in the common languages. How is it that we can engage those entrepreneurs early, early stage? And I can say that you know, some of our entrepreneurs have now gone on to search, some of them have come to Capital Factory, certainly we actually support Avindi as part of our, our mission. Um, we are the, the first uh, B Corp certified incubator in the Americas. And the whole idea behind that is, comes from some stories of my first dollars earned from my first startup were actually, I was an Austin based entrepreneur, but I actually went to Guadalajara, Mexico to, um, to serve my first customer. The early adopter for my technology 20 years ago was, you know, in another country. And just by luck that I found that early adopter, right? Early adopter customers are the ones that we want our guys, our entrepreneurs talking to, because early majority will talk them to death, right? We can help them find that. So part of what's been happening is, and if you see the four stars, we have in-country activities with entrepreneurs in those four countries. And right now at Tech Ranch, um, we have a facility in kind of the, the second hub of technology activity here in town is uh, right by Google's offices at 103 Mopac, about 20 miles, uh, 20 minutes north of here. But the idea is that how can we create conversations and bridges between all these different cities and hopefully some of you all cities as well. I very much like to build the type of relationships with the other accelerators and this is my primary ask so that we can find these early adopter customers. And that's, that's been my whole experience. Um, the, uh, my whole experience of how, how we can support our entrepreneurs. The model comes from my experience in the martial arts. I've been practicing in martial arts called Aikido for the last 16 years, Japanese martial arts for the last 21 years. The pedagogical model is anyone can step on the mat. And in the, anyone can step on the mat, and the idea is that we can help them over time become the entrepreneur that they need to be. Because typically everyone, I believe, has the answer for being an entrepreneur. It's a matter of uncovering it. Aikido also includes uh, one part. This is about harmonizing with a person attacking you. It's a fundamental philosophical difference. I really want to focus on talent development versus talent contest. I, I think it's perfectly acceptable to have the, the, the seed accelerator where there's a contest, but really what we're attempting to do is prepare the entrepreneur no matter what, right? And it comes out of my own philosophical outlook about how to develop these entrepreneurs at the earliest stages in the process. Um, the, the model actually has four parts, so just go through this real quick. The key thing, whoops, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. The key thing is we start with what makes the entrepreneur resilient, what's in their heart, followed by the mechanics. So of course, lean startup know-how, that's, that's the sort of stuff that you see in our upper left. Third one is culture, how is it that we can engender in people I'm a farmer, you're a farmer, I'm helping build your farm, you're helping build my farm, right? You know, the government's not involved, it's us. Uh, I have a family history since 1848, just a, about 20 miles north of here, that that was the whole way that my family has told me they got through that period of time. 
And uh, that's mainly where our work is. And the Bridges to Opportunity, the whole idea is like between here and Detroit, let's find your entrepreneurs opportunities here and vice versa. Or it might be that they have technology that's applicable to um, where we're working in Chile, as an example. <coughs> we're working in Antofagasta, Chile, one fifth of the world's copper is coming from Antofagasta, Chile. The only thing that's stopping them from getting more copper out of the ground and, you know, and, and taking care of the world markets is specifically this problem of energy, water, and pe people. One more slide. And this is our program, so I can go through the details if anyone could like to hear about them. I'd love to actually partner up with you uh, from the standpoint of leveraging our programs in other places. I can tell you about the whole philosophical model that's underneath this, because I do believe it's PhD level work. Um, and then I had a handful of, of, of success stories to tell you about that to kind of give you a flavor. Um, the key idea, though, comes from this photo. When pioneers went west, they did it together. And that's one of the things that uh, all of our programs are designed. And we, we say the bar is really low. There is a bar, and some people trip on it and don't make it into TechCrunch. But the whole idea of how to support pioneers is our whole focus. And we have some interesting ways of doing that. We'd love to partner up with you guys. Yeah, oops. I'm always interested in who's going to use the word pedagogical first. Uh, and Kevin did it, so nice work. Anyway, Kevin didn't hear what I said, but you'll have to fill it in later. Ped pedagogical. Oh, pedagogical, yeah. Yeah, that was a good word. <laughs> Best word of the day, by far. <laughs> I'm a key, I'm a key um, some of the is Andy from Techstars here, by the way? Okay, cool. Um, all right, so the next speaker is going to be Jason Denenberg from Launch Tennessee. Um, and I, uh, I, I really like Jason, and it's really cool what they're doing in Tennessee, and I think it's one of the best models for states to get behind startups. So with that, I'll let you explain what you're doing. Thanks. Give me a hand. Get a clicker. Sorry. Let's put it in your back pocket. It's like the fourth time. Thanks, <laughs> sir. The jeans look really nice, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do look amazing. <laughs> Don't bring that script to a weird party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good afternoon, I'm Jason Denenberg, I'm with Boston, Tennessee, um, and I, uh, I am really excited that you got to hear Eric's story uh, first, because they're doing all the really hard grunt work on the ground level. So what is Lost Tennessee? We're a public-private partnership um, driving innovation and entrepreneurship throughout the state of Tennessee. And we do that in four key areas, real quick. I just want to give you some backdrop of our organization that I'm going to go into our accelerator. So uh, the first will be commercialization, so trying to reduce the barriers and increase efficiency um, working in the uh, tech and research side. So think Oak Ridge National Lab, Vanderbilt University, Tennessee, St. Jude, and how can we get really cool pieces of technology <coughs> off the shelves and into the hands of entrepreneurs in our state. Uh, capital formation, obviously a core component, uh, whether that's helping um, introduce uh, people in our network to what Eric's doing in his angel efforts, or whether it's our $30 million co-investment fund, uh, where we follow the private sector and angel investors, um, and it's a tiered system, and so hopefully that turns into an evergreen fund. We've uh, invested roughly two, 22 million of the 30, and that's been levered up against uh, $68 million from the private sector, so we've seen some really good movement there. Um, outreach, whether it's a uh, one to 40 uh, conversation today, or whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation at a coffee shop, or um, selfless uh, promotion here. Our Southland Conference uh, this June in Nashville, um, in terms of outreach and, and kind of sticking a flag uh, in the Southeast and, and really showcasing all the great activity that's going on there. Um, so we'd love for you guys to come. Um, and then entrepreneurship, and that's really where I spend um, the bulk of my energy and efforts. Uh, we have got nine entities around the state um, that we support uh, uh, financially and programmatically. And so we give each of the nine $250,000 per year, um, and then anything that we can do uh, programmatically to help support them. And so I wanted to kind of give you a snapshot of what that looks like. And you know, the sector focus thing, that is really interesting. I mean, how are you going to separate? 
uh, yourselves and really focus and love the love the energy focus on what you're doing in, in Houston. So um, you heard from Eric and then um, Nashville, you know, healthcare, IT, and services is really huge. Tullahoma, Tennessee, with their um, <coughs> automotive focus. And so we've got great partnerships with Nissan, whose North American headquarters is in Nashville. Um, uh, Volkswagen, who's in Chattanooga. So really strong uh, sector focus there in automotive. And CoLab has got a gigabit of uh, internet connectivity in 600 homes and doing some really amazing stuff there for kind of future smart city innovation. Um, and so then, what, what are we doing? And so, in Washington, C, in terms of being a statewide organization, uh, we're trying to be additive to what Eric and our other partners are doing every day. And so, when, when their resources tap out, how can we continue to help our entrepreneurs and our startups? So, you know, there's a huge hanging question about what happens after all these demo days, right? I mean, these companies still need support, they still need introductions, they still need um, uh, great mentorship. And so, we thought, uh, let's put together something that picks up from where the accelerators run out of resources and help the next, uh, help the startups get to the next phase, right? And so in partnership with the Blackstone Charitable Foundation, we launched the 10 program uh, last August. We had um, any, any startup that had gone through and graduated from one of our state's accelerator programs was eligible to apply for the 10 program. We had out-of-state investors come and do a statewide demo day to select 10 companies out of uh, 20 that were selected to present, and uh, over 100, or excuse me, over 75 applied. And so we did this master accelerator program that was less focused on curriculum, but more focused on connectivity and really putting some pieces in to really drive your business. And so uh, we did, we implemented the Rockefeller habits with each team and really focusing on their 90 uh, and 120 day goals and then backing that into uh, weekly activity and tracking it through the course of the six month program. Uh, we also did uh, two great trips to California for a week and uh, in New York recently, and, and the program actually just wrapped up uh, two weeks ago at the end of February. So some really early uh, results from that. I'm uh, pretty excited and, and trying to get some more. But the, but the last one, uh, Vendor Rescue, one of the teams that recently just signed um, uh, a great contract with Microsoft uh, to, to showcase their product in uh, Tennessee and Georgia. And so as you can imagine, uh, a lot of room to grow there uh, for them. And so um, we just ask, um, and it's, it's been touched on before, but I think the connectivity between uh, accelerators is really important. Um, and if we have energy focused startups, we're not doing that, right? So I wanna make sure that they get, and if they leave our state and never come back, but they're a successful company, that will come back, right? And, and you know, I, I think, you know, if our, if our governor was sitting here, I might, change that <laughs> a little bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, the connectivity on the accelerator side, and so we can network together. And then for startups, if you've got, if you're working on something that uh, we're doing really well in our state in terms of sector and support, uh, come to Tennessee and build your company there. Cool. Awesome, good to hear. It only took him two years to grow that beard, but it's, it does look pretty good. Um, so uh, yeah, so I really love what what again what they're doing to support uh, accelerators throughout the state. Really good job. So um, we have our last accelerator presenting, um, and that is going to be the Capital Factor, which of course is hosting us here. So give him a really big Ooh. hand. Also, glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to take that and I'll take it over. I'm only coming back here because I don't have so many hands, but just a second. Thanks for coming. My name is Josh Bear, and welcome to Capital Factory. Um, I'll go ahead and say we have the best swag. Uh, so if you guys want an awesome T-shirt before you go, this is our iChar T-shirt, and uh, there's we have, like hoodies, all kinds of stuff. So check them out before you go. We are uh, we're totally focused on Austin. Uh, we think Austin's really at its prime right now. It's uh, obviously on kind of like every top ten list you see. It is one of the best cities or fastest growing, uh, and it's not just for the, the general economy, but it's that way for startups too. So it's frequently rated one of the best places for startups to grow. And um, 
our model, uh, obviously we take full advantage of South by Southwest as well, right? That's been a big part of Austin's success and it's something kind of we ride as, we, we ride as hard as we can. We throw uh, one of the biggest parties at South by, uh, which happened last Thursday. Um, let's see if my slides are gonna go here. And uh, it's called the Startup Crawl and uh, we just try to take as much advantage of that as we can. I think I just crashed. Let's see. One more try, otherwise we'll jump out of the slides. Yeah. Here's the startup crawl. All right, well, I'll let that go. Um, anyway, so uh, we are, you know, we are, uh, I'm gonna get nothing. All right, a little bit about our numbers. So we have 50,000 square feet here. We're on two different floors. Uh, we're located right in the middle of downtown Austin. And, uh, and we really think of ourselves as kind of the heart of the startup community. Um, it's really based down here in Austin. If you look at a map of where all the tech startups are, they're right here. They're in this building. They're in the building across the street. They're in the building next door. They're above all the bars on 6th Street uh, because young people and tech people want to work downtown. Uh, and so that's kind of, kind of where, uh, where it is. Um, we have, uh, we host about, uh, we had 25,000 programmers and, and entrepreneurs come through here last year because every night of the week in this room and in the classroom across the way, there's free meetups and events where all the communities getting together and uh, teaching and helping each other. Uh, and that's one big foundation of it. Um, and then we also uh, have uh, 550 members that work here during the day where we're nor normally where we're sitting now, their desks set up and people work here. Uh, and then you can kind of see through the glass dedicated stations where small companies have pods for themselves and generally works up to about 15 people at that point. They kind of want to go get their own space. We have about 200 startups that work here, almost about 600 events a year. Uh, and we work with many other partners as well, including uh, Techstars and DreamIt. And Vindy was here before as well. Um, and uh, this is 100% privately funded by entrepreneurs, uh, which, we're really, which we're really proud of. Um, we have lots of other partners uh, that we've worked with, uh, both commercial and other incubators and, and co-working spaces. Uh, and, uh, but the core of it is really our mentors. We have really all of the most successful entrepreneurs in Austin, who are also uh, angel investors, most of them, who come here to pay it forward and meet with young entrepreneurs and help them get started. And I think that's really kind of the core of the program uh, that we're, we're most excited about. So, uh, here's our, that's downtown Austin. Those are startups. There's Capital Factory. Um, so, this seems like a good idea. We're in the middle of downtown, um, and if you want to make a blueprint for it, it's really four parts. We're a community center where people come together. We're a co-working space for them to work. We have a mentoring program and a fund that sits on top of that. And just some you know, quick photos. There's places for people to work, for they can sit or they can stand. Uh, we have a great classroom with programming going on all the time. Um, and uh, constantly you kind of fill that out to standing room only. Um, we have events in here all the time with pitch events and things like that. Uh, let just let's go faster this way. Uh, we uh, have a camera up there. This is being streamed and recorded right now through our partner Life Size. That's also in the classroom. So all the great things that are going on here get captured and shared with the rest of the world outside of Austin. Uh, and if you had to really uh, boil it down to one thing, it's, it's really about density. It's about how do we just get as much awesomeness in one place as possible, which then draws in everybody else that we care about. And uh, that's really a big part of it. It means part of why you guys are here today. It means any investor that comes to town, comes here to meet startups, press, government officials, other people like that. Uh, you'll notice the little presidential seal over there. We're, we're very fortunate to have President Obama come visit last year. Uh, five of our startups got to pitch to him, and he did not invest in any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but a little bit about, I think what's most unique about our model is our fund. Um, it's really a community-driven fund. Uh, the way our model, we started out like a more traditional accelerator on the GAN model and ran three classes of that that worked really well for us. Um, but uh, we kind of learned that, similar to what we heard from some other people here, we wanted to have a longer engagement. It takes more than three months to build a startup, and we had a lot of ways that we could support them through that. And so where our model works is we have a monthly application process where companies apply. They give up two points of equity to join our incubator. It's not for investment. It's for that kind of a speed pass to, the, to all the VFE access to mentors and investors and press and other things like that. And then they start meeting with all those mentors that I talked about. And their goal is to get two of them to invest in their startup personally. Usually that's 25K on a convertible note. And if two of the mentors invest, 
then our fund matches that investment with fifty thousand dollars, and we'll do about 20, 25 those, 20, 20 to twenty five of those a year. About a month ago, we announced uh, two VC partners, Silver Partners here in Austin, and Floodgate, which is Mike Maples Jr. out in Silicon Valley, and they're also matching our match as well. So now, if a startup can get two mentors to each invest 25K, they still have 150K, uh, and chances are if they did that, they got a couple other investors too, because that's how angel, angel investors work. Um, and then our general model is then to see which ones go do a, a real Series A uh, and put about $250,000 into those as they grow. So that is a Capital Factory. Really glad to have you all here. I'm right on time, even with my slide mess up. And uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for work. If, if you notice, uh, Josh is the only one who used their amazing stage. Uh, so thank you for doing this great stage for us. The two-inch stage. It worked out really well. <laughs> We ordered feet for it, the feet didn't come in. The feet didn't come in. It's a good looking stage though, thank you. Um, no, in, in all seriousness, thank you Josh for, for having us here. It's, it's cool coming to Austin and South by and having a place where we can get accelerants together to do this, so thanks a lot for doing that. Um, there is, um, so, so that's the, we are done with the, the official presentation for you're today. Fine. Oh, you're, I asked where you were. Yeah, I ran here. Andy from Techstars. This is really awkward because we said we were done five minutes ago. I'm just kidding. You're fine. <laughs> anyway, so Andy, you want to come up and just do your? Yeah. Hey, by the way, your your deck didn't. It's not opening up. I have my computer. Can you, can you can you bring it up real quick? All right, Andy's gonna do a quick slide deck on Techstars, and we'll we'll call it a day. Um, man, I had a whole spiel ready to go for for ending this thing. Really awkward, Andy. <laughs> no, it's fine. You weren't here when we were talking about publicly shaming, how that's part of this, so. But your jeans look really nice. My jeans look nice. Yeah, thanks for everybody for emailing me how good I looked. I really, most of you in the room emailed me to tell me that, so thanks. No, I really appreciate it. Makes me feel really good inside. Um, there comes Andy. Hey, while we're at it too, there's a person in the back of the room who's uh, rubbing his eyes right now. He's in the pink shirt. Matt, raise your hand. So Matt, Matt's a good friend, um, and Matt um, runs a company called fsuccess.com. Um, most of the gaming accelerators use it for their applications. So if you are not using fsuccess or want to know, know more information, talk to talk to Matt back there. He'll be here for a little bit. Hey, Andy. Hi. All right, do you want to plug it in up there? Mark, it's you, good to go. You ready? Okay, perfect. We're going to let Andy take it away. Awesome. Andy's using the stage, by the way. It helps. <laughs> Hi, Josh is supposed to be at our event right now because he's a mentor at Techstars. I am there too. Like I am there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hi, everybody. My name is Andy. I'm going to talk about Techstars. David Cohen and Brad Feld, one VC and one entrepreneur, got together to talk about how to help entrepreneurs increase their chances of success. Specifically, they wanted to help early stage companies get seed funding and more importantly, mentorship. The programs really haven't changed much since. 10 companies go through a 13 week boot camp that ends in a demo day and then they become part of a really powerful network. Today, we're in seven cities, including Austin, finally, and London. We also have vertical programs with companies like Disney, Sprint, and RGA. So what's our secret sauce? We think that you can always tweak an idea, but what makes or breaks a business is who's working on it. We spot teams the same way that we hire people. It's about what you bring to the table and how we work together. So far, we have 329 companies that are active today. We have had 31 exits and have created more than 2,500 jobs. Some of our success stories include DigitalOcean, which had the best party at South by so far, <laughs> and raised more than $40 million. SendGrid Robotics makes those really awesome spheres that you control with your phone, GrabCat, and Lore. But we're only as powerful as the network that we have, and that includes the people in them. So we'd love your support if you want to talk later. Thank you to you guys for having us today. Woo. <laughs> Well done. That didn't even need public shaming. You did great. Like, <laughs> you guys ever get 
Thank, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Okay, so that ends the official time together of presenting. Thank you to all of the accelerators for coming here and doing this, for spending the time doing this. Um, we really wanted to get the accelerators in the room to share their model, to get to know one another, and that to us is, is success, that people are able to get to know one another. And the goal from here is, if you notice, everybody in their slides with an ask, and the hope is, is that when you leave here, you're able to support and help one another. Um, this is still a growing industry, and if we're able to come alongside of one another and help one another just a little bit, I think overall the industry is going to continue to grow and develop and get a lot better. Um, I, I want to thank two people again, number one, Capital Factory and Josh. Thank you again for, for letting us be here. Thank you guys. Um, and uh, the other thing is the SBA. It's really fun doing these events. Um, and this is our second one that we've done like this, and it's it's been really good. Um, I'm really excited about this $2.5 million. And they, um, there's going to be a lot more, which I, I don't know about it, and I, I think <laughs> they're going to talk about a lot more in the next few weeks. Um, but the cool thing is it goes towards funding accelerator operations, um, which is a huge huge benefit for accelerators out there and something that I continue to talk to most of our accelerators about. So we're very thankful for that and looking forward to seeing how that plays out. So with that, um, I'm done for, for the day. Um, if you want to talk about me, if you want to talk about me later, <laughs> later, happy to do it. I love like your shoes. Around. You like your shoes too? Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Nice I like, I like these, thank, and nice biceps. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, with that, I'll hand it back to the SBA. Thanks. Thank you. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, well, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> I did that good of a job. They don't want to talk anymore. OK, so what we're going to do is just feel free to hang out, uh, mix and mingle. We're going to be here until about 3 o'clock or so, right? And then uh, we'll call it a day. So thanks, everybody, for coming. And we'll see you soon.